I am Nicola Dixon and I'm an artist from the Isle of Man. Um, I live in Peel and I've lived here since I was three. Lived in the hills and I now live right in the centre of Peel. And I've been painting, I've always been creative, but I've been painting uh, as my job really since 1992, so it's 22 years now, so yeah, long time. And we're looking at an exhibition behind you that you featured at the Festival Anticentique de Lorient in yeah. Brittany in 2014. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about the inspiration. Well, um, I it, it came from various forms. Um, I had years. I suppose I started off making jewellery. Um, I did a lot of work. Uh, I was very much inspired by Archibald Knox. Um, and then when I started painting boats, I put put a lot of the Knox work aside. And then with Knox's anniversary this year, um, I revisited that because my work's in the house of Manannan and I did some teaching. So my idea was to do Knox work. And then I actually had some visitors over from America and they were asking me about the meaning of the Triscoll. And I had um, been, I'd done, already done some Triscoll work um, for the uh, Young Cluniac logo. Um, and it was, it was more like, oh yes, it's the Isle of Man, but it's a Triscoll. And then I looked into the meanings of it and found that it was massive. So I, it was like an obvious step forward. And then I just opened this book on Anamkara, called Anamkara by John, John O'Donoghue, and the Deer's Cry was on page three. And I'd studied the Deer's Cry because Archibald Knox had studied the Deer's Cry for his masterwork and had spent a long time looking at it, but didn't really know anything about its meaning. And there was nine lines separated out of the deer's cry in in uh, Anamkara and I thought right okay that's it Triscoll's um, deer's cry and that that can be my theme so Noxy Triscoll's and this is this is the result. So what is the deer's cry about? Um, the deer's cry is um, an ancient prayer or lorica or it or salutation of the day it sort of depends on where you read about it I mean it's about 50 or 60 lines long and it was said to be recited by St Patrick in or I think first recorded in 433 was one record I had, um, and it's 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 like it's, so it's linked to sort of Celtic wisdom. It's um, how the Celts viewed their place in the world, um, um, and and the Deer's Cry's prayer of protection to protect them within within the world. And in some parts, the story around St Patrick is that he recited the prayer when he was being ambushed, and he, he and his followers were being ambushed. And he was converted to a doe, and his followers were converted to fawns, and they were therefore protected. So that's how the name The Deer's Cry came about. And Knox's work on The Deer's Cry is considered a meditative work. Yeah. How important is meditation to your work? Well, it's been a new thing. I have to say, I really struggled with creativity for a while, massively so actually, and I got all the books <laughs> to try and work out what I was doing wrong. I mean, I was really, really, it was getting a big, big problem. And also, actually also in the run up to the show, and you know, for other reasons, I'd started to learn to meditate about two years ago. And the more I read about creativity, the more I realised that it was the same thing. And the hero's journey was the words that were described on both counts um, about meditation and about creativity. Um, and it's one of those things that I've been learning more and more about it. And you, I suddenly realised what, what all these artists are writing about and singing about and what all this poetry is about, which has been fantastic. Because I you know, did find it very frustrating in the past. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's been very important and also it's important for this work because there are parallels between my, um, things in this work and the form of meditation that I've been learning. So yeah, it's been fantastic. And also I find that the, the meditation takes you to a space, I'm just trying to learn to sort of knock the brain out the way, to get myself out the way so the work can come through me. And that's what I found. So this work almost arrived on my desk. It was really strange. Um, it was just suddenly there. Also, the the Uncognac Tristel, it was just... I spent three days of just drawing. My mind wasn't involved at all, and a vast amount of work was created in that time. And I think that's all part of where, you know, where meditation and creativity meet. Now I know. Thank goodness. <laughs> Yeah, that's an amazing, powerful part, an amazingly powerful part of, I think, creativity yeah. is that idea of letting go at some point yeah. and just letting the work flow. Yeah. Um, I wonder if you could come back to this idea of Triscoll's and the importance of Triscoll's. Yeah. Is there a theme through a lot of the work? 
Yes, I mean, the, the Triscolls, I, as I say, I had these American guests and I, I said, oh, three legs of man, yes, Sicily. And then looked into it and it was the, 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 the three thing, um, birth, death, rebirth, um, father, mother, child, land, sea, sky. Um, and it seems to mean sort of like creation, movement, growth, integration. It almost sort of life itself seems to come from it. Um, and also the fact that it, it's like spinning, it's from the inner world into the outer world um, is also this, this sort of symbolism within the Triscoll lines going in and out, which kind of also links with meditation and sort of life in general. It's sort of powerful stuff, actually. And it's also a very ancient symbol. You know, there's eight, there's Triscolls on ancient in Bronze Age stones in Ireland. I think the Greeks, I think it's on Greek things as well. Um, yeah, and, it, and it's like these symbols seem to react on a, on a primeval, on a sort of deep level to people that you don't even know about, which is something that I'm fascinated by. I don't know too much about it, but... Um, I'm very curious and I, I was talking to a healer about um, my sort of three days drawing Triscolls that led to the Junkuniak logo and she was going, hmm, that's interesting, you know, yeah, you'll be getting some integration by drawing that symbol and I thought, well, that's interesting. So I was also very curious to see what reaction people would have to my Triscolls in L'Oreal. Um, because I was, I thought that there could well be an energy reaction to it. Um, just I don't know much about it because I kind of put, I laid them all out in my studio, and I could kind of feel something going on with them. And I, sure enough, I did have people reacting to them in L'Oreal, mm -hmm. which was great. That's just so. It's, it's early days of me knowing all this stuff. But I'm very curious about it all. I wondered if we could just talk about one or two of the pieces that you yeah. showed in yeah. in Lorient mm -hmm. and talk about which lines they, they reflect, which elements. Okay. Well, um, if I go through this whole... this is So this is nine lines from the deer's cry, which is sort of separated out. So it seemed to be like a salutation of the day. Um, and so it starts, it's, I arise today through strength of heaven, light of sun, radiance of moon, Splendour of fire, speed of lightning, swiftness of wind, depth of the sea, stability of earth, and compactness of rock. So yeah, that's the nine. So the really interesting one, I think, is the I arise today through strength of heaven. And I, that just came to me and I was looked into, into the planets and it just seemed to fit with, with having um, the planets within it and the... Vitruvian man in the centre because also after the Yunkriniak logo I spoke to a friend who's a shaman and he said the really important thing with Triscolls is that there should be something in the centre because the centre is where creation comes from um, which I hadn't really known about so that's the difference between those and the early ones so that's so these ones have something in the centre so yes we have sort of man woman you know in, in the centre of that in the sort of it, there's a golden figure in this sort of silver light really and with the, the universe behind um, and then you know we have the radiating moon um, which I, I just really love that one the sort of the colours, I love the moon and the, you know, the full moon feeling, so that's a, a favourite one of mine. And I think the compactness of rock one was interesting because I went down to um, the Calf of Man and um, it was a, actually a trip organised by the people that I do meditation with actually and one of the teachers was on the trip and she and she was teaching me about creativity and meditation. So it was, a very, it was kind of like the turning point in the whole show. And I had been drawing guillemots before that, but you know the rocks there are so fantastic that the guillemots seem to fit in to the compactness of rock sort of feeling. And it's also this is all linked with man's everything being connected and man's place in nature. So that's and the and the nature with that. And then it's like you have the lightning. It's like everything. It's like this was the last one to complete be completed half an hour before the exhibition was due. And it's like the lightning at the centre going. Which is quite powerful as well. I hadn't really realised how they would all look like that. I was going to do them as a line actually, um, and we didn't have as much space as we thought in Lorient and hung them as a, as a nine like this, and it's far more powerful. So it works well because it's three rows of three as yeah. well, which links yeah. back to the Triscoll, yeah. so it does make it a, a very perfect. powerful collection. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I just wonder um, how you really feel about Knox's link to the Isle of Man and the influence of Knox through 
your work and what it's like revisiting some a project that he um, completed so many years ago. It's it's daunting. I mean, I tried not to get too involved um, with what Knox had actually done with the Deer's Crown because I would get phased and um, blown away by it because his was 20 years' work and this was two months. Um, so that, and I have a renewed respect for, I always had huge respect for him, but looking at the intricacy of his work and the fact that there's just, there's just no mistakes and that is amazing, but also the meditative nature of it, you look at it and your your, your eyes just go round and round and round and you, know, you, it's, you feel that he was very connected to the island in a very deep spiritual manner and that's really what has informed his, his work. Um, and you know, I, I look forward to studying it more to actually get those feelings. I, I was, yeah, I, I think I need to study it more as well to kind of get out of it. I was just amazed by his colours, amazed by his line. And with this, the spirituality stuff I've been looking at, you know, I think he was a mystic as well, really. You know, I get that feeling more and more about him. I'm very protective of that as well. You know, I think the fact that he burned so much is. You know, he wanted people to see what he was happy mm-hmm. for them to see and kept a lot quiet, mm-hmm. which I can understand. <laughs> yeah, amazing man, really. And yeah, and, and, and when I started studying um, Archibald Knox's work, it was very much from the Glen, not Glen Tilbrook, the Adrian Tilbrook book. And, you know, and it was very much looking at the, uh, the patterns and the lines and the small elements and not really getting the big picture. And, I, and it was interesting, actually, because I have to admit, I did react against the, the huge analysis of Knox. I thought, I wouldn't want that to happen to me. And then I recently read Stephen Martin's Jungian analysis of him in, in um, his big book. I thought, oh, yes, that's interesting, because you can, you know, you, you, it's almost like you have to have the knowledge to be able to understand what's being written mm-hmm. instead of getting frustrated by it. And, yeah, oops. you know, it, it, I'm sure I'll, more will come. As I'm learning more, I'll, I'll understand more as well. I think it's very important that you have revisited this idea of Knox in yeah. the 150th anniversary Absolutely. of his birth. Yeah. And yeah. it's great to see a contemporary artist working on the same sort of themes as him. Yeah. Yes, no, it's great. And what, I love his organic line. You know, it's the, the, the flowing nature of it because a lot of Celtic knot work is, is really quite rigid. Um, and I'm sort of also looking forward to doing a schools project, learning how to teach the, the flowing line in a, in a, in a different way to, to make it more accessible to children. So, yeah, that's, that's great. Thank yeah, you very much. <laughs> So boats have been a really important theme of your mm-hmm. work for years. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about some of the Right, yes. Well, um, years ago, actually, yeah, I was involved with uh, building lifeboats at school, actually, and I really loved it. It was a great escape, and I worked on a yacht for a while. And then I sailed down to, to France on the White Heather, a traditional Manx fishing boat, and met up with all the lug- the Cornish luggers, which was fantastic. And I hadn't realised that the, the, the Cornish luggers and the Manx fishing boats are related, which is fascinating. Anyway, I'd loved it. The whole boat scene was wonderful. And so I became more and more involved with the sailing world and did a lot of um, design work for boats, festivals and sailing events all around the world, actually. Um, and I've sort of put this to aside a, a little bit, but I still do the artwork for Peel Boat Weekend, which is here. Is the, it was one of the first... It was a second triscal after the Lorient one, and um, with the traditional the traditional boats that come to the boat weekend around it, and then this sort of developed into these other triscals where also reading the Celtic wisdom. It's like combining the themes. It's the wisdom, and the interlace and the boats. This, this other one I read each day is a journey. So this triscal has a, a traditional Manx fishing boat, a Manx nicky. Um, so sort of sailing, there's, and there's six points where there's no sails. One, it's got the mizzen, and then the main, and then the jib, and then a sort of topsail, and then one other one that I can't remember his name, and the last one <laughs> going round the triscal. So it's, yeah, it's developing uh, around. So that's, that's like, a, it's, it's like development because the triscal is also about growth and movement, and ju- it's also all the journeys thing as well. 
Um, and this one is just a, a purer spiral once again with the Manx Nicky on it. And also with the Manx Nicky, I have used it as my logo because I'm Nicola. So that was <laughs> all peel Nicky. Um, so yeah, so that that was that was that logo really. And then also the top trist skull. Um, I, one of the reasons I went off sailing a bit was I was getting more and more seasick. And, um, but I loved it. But I always loved arriving in harbour. It was just the best thing. And it all the lee of the land. And um, this <laughs> Driscoll is kind of, it's like coming back to safety. It's being, it's almost like being hugged by the land. And you have the guiding lights there or the beautiful beach and the thought of just, yeah, being there. And, or maybe setting off to another beautiful spot. And that, that was the idea behind that. And actually going back to the thing of having something in the centre, tiny, tiny in the middle, there's somebody... Um, with a telescope looking out to sea, which is often a very ancient fishing tradition of waiting, waiting for the boats to come back you know, with, with, with your family on. How did you develop the style of the knotwork? Was it very complicated to work out the lines in the, in the first time? Well, you know, I lived in the hills years ago when I didn't drive and there's hardly any buses. I look back at it now, I spent hours and hours drawing knotwork onto jewellery. Um, and I think I just got really good at drawing it, and I can I can just I'm just really fast now at it. But that was often very simple, and these are much more complex. But I could just do it. It's like it arrived. I can show you some sketches um, of how these developed, and you just look at it. You, you develop. It's a bit like you, you do it until it looks right as well. I mean, it's it's measured, but not particularly. You. It's a bit. I always say with boat design, if it looks right, it is right. And that's what I've done with these triscals. So it's, it's complex, but somehow I've, I've done so much of it, it's simple. It's, they say you have to do miles on paper, and I've done a lot of miles. It's <laughs> <laughs> great. So these, yeah. Um, and it's been fun also simplifying it, because this is actually quite a simple one. And what was interesting was um, I did a mandala course earlier this year. And they were talking about uh, putting intention into a painting, which I didn't really know about. It's all these things that I just did. Um, and I had to... So if you put love into a painting or joy into a painting, they say that it, it radiates out, which is a fascinating thing. So anyway, this one was actually, I think, the first Triscoll that I did. And it was done very... It, it, for, for the L'Oreal Monster, but it's very freely. So there's almost like a different energy behind it. And I had one lady who looked a bit magic coming to the show, and she was getting visions from that one, which was really strange. She said, this one is very different to the rest. And I had to agree with her, because it, this one was done with a very different energy to these ones, which were, had an, an intention of having to depict something behind them. Which is, yeah, I have, it's, it's all in the I'm learning <laughs> school of thought. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. So that, I think this is, this is actually a really important one. That's the true sense of an uh, sense of an artist that they're always learning. Yeah, very much so. Yes, and I know that I've got a lot to learn. That's what's exciting. <laughs> this is fantastic work. Thank you. <laughs>